What up everybody and welcome to Baz on Blades. My name is Baz and I talk about blades. Today what we're going to do, we're going to review an Emerson knife. This is an Emerson A100 folder and um, I had to think long and hard about this review. I do not know what direction it's going to go into uh, but I would imagine it is going to be less of a review and more of a constructive criticism session uh, from me to Emerson Knives. And you may ask, uh, why would Emerson Knives listen to anything Baz on Blades says? Because Emerson is a big, huge, successful company and Baz on Blades is a little itty bitty uh, YouTube knife reviewer. And if you look at it that way, that is correct. But what I'm going to talk about in this video, this review, this overview, are the things that knife enthusiasts have been saying for years about Emerson knives that they just do not want to come right out and say it in the community. And I'm going to be that sort of self-elected voice for that. Um, because these are things that need to be said publicly. Um, Emerson Knives, the company, the man, Ernest Emerson, um, I love him. You know, I've met Ernest Emerson before, and he was great. He was gracious and outgoing. He took time to speak with me. Um, I very much enjoyed it. Everybody I've dealt with at Emerson has been really great. Um, you know, no issues at all. My issues are solely with the knives the physical product and these are issues that are echoed throughout the community they're just not really uh, you know it's sort of the elephant in the room um, and I'm going to talk about them guys um, I've tried to record this a couple of times already and have yet to get it under 40 minutes so we're going to condense things down and get our points made here uh, the Emerson A100 is a standard model from Emerson. It's an older design. Uh, this uh, example is post-2015, as uh, 2015 is when they stopped dating the blades. Um, so it is new production. So we're going to talk about new production from Emerson. And the funny thing is, uh, the new production, it's pretty much the same exact thing as the old production. What you see here in my opinion is premium knife making circa 1999-2000 20 years ago uh, and what I'm going to show you to prove that is an offering from another company from the same exact time period in the same exact basic build of a liner lock tactical uh, with G10 handle scales, what was a premium blade steel at that time, um, over titanium or combination titanium and stainless liners, but on both of these, lockup on the liner lock is accom accomplished through a titanium liner lock. So it, it, they're basically the same thing, guys. Uh, I even want you to look at the pocket clips. That right there will tell you the era of both of these knives. Two of the best pocket clip designs in a stamp steel pocket clip ever done. Not deep carry, but man, they're good pocket clips from both of these manufacturers. Um, but what you've got here is knife making circa 1999-2000 and really has never grown beyond that. Uh, and that is the main, one of the main, one of the main issues that I have with Emerson knives. Now let's bring in the packaging here. Uh, Emerson box. Here is your model number sticker. Uh, inside of that box the knife was in a plastic bag. Uh, there is an Emerson sticker in there uh, and some care and warranty information from Emerson. A little fold out for that. Very you know basic packaging. Uh, much like you would find in a modern zero tolerance knife, uh, you know, just with a different brand name on it, basically. Um, so what we've got here in the A100 is a drop point, uh, slim profile, easy to carry, EDC size knife. Uh, you're looking at a three and a half inch blade length, around nine centimeters, uh, blade stock thickness, 
123 thousandths of an inch or 3.14 millimeters. Your blade width, 947 thousandths of an inch or 24 millimeters. Uh, the handle length, 4 and 5 eighths of an inch or slightly greater than 12 centimeters. Handle thickness, 529 thousandths of an inch or 13.44 millimeters. Your handle width at the widest, 1 inch or 25.4 millimeters. Uh, closed length or closed width, I'm sorry, on this nearly fully nested style of knife um, is 1.14 inches or 29 millimeters. Your overall length, about 8 and 3 eighths of an inch or slightly greater than 21 centimeters. Uh, stop pin diameter, 188 thousandths of an inch or 4.8 millimeters. Uh, behind the edge thickness, uh, a thicker than average for this size of knife, 30 thousandths of an inch, and that is average for three spots, and that's 0.8 millimeter. Uh, handle to blade ratio, I think it was about 0.72, and your weight, 4.83 ounces or 137 grams, uh, slightly heavier than you would expect from a 3.5 inch blade EDC size knife. Uh, we like to see those at the one ounce per one inch of blade length ratio. Uh, you know, that, that's a good um, standard to set there. Uh, you know, although not all knives meet it, and it doesn't make this particularly heavy, uh, you're going to say, oh, that's a little heavier than whatever else that you have that's in that size. Um, your blade steel on this is 154 cm. Um, which is from Crucible. It is a high carbon, high chromium, um, stainless steel. It is not a CPM type steel, although there was a CPM version of it, which I think is out of production at this time. Um, in 99-2000, this was a great steel along with its Japanese counterpart, ATS-34, one made by Crucible in America, one made by Hitachi in Japan, but basically the same steels and very competitive between what was probably uh, the biggest two competitors on the, you know, then fairly new tactical folder market. Uh, a market pretty much that Ernest Emerson basically created. I mean, uh, arguably he's the man responsible for what we see in modern tactical folders. I, I got to give him credit there. Um, you know, C, or 154CM is a decent steel. It's an improvement above 440C uh, today in 2018. It is considered a bridging type of steel between the upper mid range of VG10 um, and 440C and AUS8 and uh, you know 14C and all of those. Uh, this is going to be a steel that's going to bridge you from that mid-range up to the lower end of the high end steels like S30V, S35. Um, this and the counterpart ATS-134 is going to be in between that. So what you get out of 154CM, typically the Rockwell is 58 to 61. Um, Emerson says they rock well at 57, 59, which is a little soft by today's standards for a, a high-end stainless, but I am sure they are doing that to add to the toughness and impact resistance of the edge. They mark it on that toughness, guys. Uh, so the toughness and the you know sort of edge retention, wear resistant, higher rock wells are sort of a trading point, guys. Uh, decent corrosion resistance, about the same, slightly less actually than 440C. Uh, it will stain. I've had uh, 154CM stain on me fairly quickly. Uh, in fact, this ATS-34 uh, stained on me within moments of cutting some tomato with it. Moments, guys, and it stained. Uh, so it's not extremely stainless. Uh, it is stainless, though. Uh, you know, it's a decent steel. Good edge retention, good toughness, and decent corrosion resistance. Material-wise in the handle, your G10 uh, over a front side stainless liner, a slightly thicker lock side titanium liner, and yet again, G10. 
uh, stainless small parts that are standard pattern. They are not uh, torques. They are flathead and um, call it Phillips head, although these aren't really Phillips. I cannot remember the technical name for this type of screw. Uh, but is closely that of a Phillips, except it doesn't have the empty center section. It's actually a true cross hatch uh, pattern. Whatever, I can't remember the name of that. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, you know, standard, really, again, guys, standard sort of build, circa 1999-2000. These were high-end builds. In that time frame, uh, titanium liner locks were high-end builds, guys. Um, and those of you that are old enough, you remember that. Um, so material-wise, it's pretty standard, guys, for a tactical knife. Uh, liner lock, G10, uh, decent blade steel. Uh, yeah, pretty standard. Uh, where we go wrong on Emerson knives is the knife that they made that was high-end in 1999 or 2000, they never changed it. Uh, sure, they've made you know very small changes to it, but they have really not changed the core of this knife while the rest of the knife world has uh, grown, expanded, and been refined to a, a, a indescribable degree, guys. I'm telling you, the things that we see every day now, we never imagined 20 years ago. I'm telling you that right now. Uh, take a look at this. $52 knife. $52 knife. Fully machined G10. And this pocketed um, faux bolster type of build. That's a fairly complex build, guys. Um, fully polished and even edges and... I mean, it's a liner lock just like this is, guys, but it's um, 20 years more refined than the Emerson is, and it's one quarter the cost, too. Uh, we're becoming spoiled by that. Uh, fit and finish on this thing as far as the blade goes. Uh, you know what? I'm not going to say anything bad about the fit and finish for the most part. Um, it's not bad. Um, and it's, it's pretty good, actually. Uh, you know, it's a combination of as ground primary bevel and, um, you know, the dressing bevels here, the uh, uh, swedge on the back of it, and then you've got stone wash on the flats. Um, I, don't, I don't care very much for the way that Emerson Knives does their edges. Um, this has, a, for the primary grind, it's got a symmetrical V grind. But for the secondary or edge grind, it's a, like a faux chisel grind. It's a, a wide bevel that's very steep, guys, on the front. And then a barely there buffed off sort of micro bevel on the back. Um, not, a, not a true zero grind or anything because it is slightly beveled. It was buffed pretty hard on the back, guys. Um, so... The thing that I don't get about this type of, of blade grind is it's a left-handed grind. Um, Ernest Emerson and Emerson Knives do their chisel grinds, uh, which this is not a chisel grind. This is a V grind. But they do these grinds to be aesthetically pleasing on the face side, and that makes this a left-hand cutter, regardless of whether you're left-handed or right-handed or using it either way. Uh, the edge of bevel is on this side. Uh, you go to cut material. When you cut a material, you're holding it here. You want your cut to push your cut material off to the loose side. You don't want your edge grind to push into the material you're holding, guys. That's not an efficient cutter. What it is, it's tough. You know, it leaves that 30 thousandths behind the edge thickness. But guess what? You could do that with a symmetrical grind and have even cutting performance at the same time. Um, the fit and finish, it, I want to bridge from that into the fit and finish on the handle. And I want to say there's going to be some Emerson, uh, what we would call fanboys, supporters, that are going to come into the comment section and they're going to say, well, we don't want a pretty knife. We want a tough knife. Well, for those of us that live in reality and understand that this folding knife is absolutely no tougher than a pretty 
folding knife. Uh, I mean, guys, right now, I could take this knife just like this against this tabletop and lean on it and put weight and pressure on it, and I could break this knife in half easily. Easily, guys. And I'm not bragging about my strength either. This is just a folding knife. They're, they're not heavy-duty use. And yeah, that's marketed by Emerson. It's marketed by Zero Tolerance and all of that. But there's no such thing as a heavy-duty folder. I can break any folder you bring to me within moments. And I don't have to get crazy with it, guys. It's easily done. They're separate parts with a very narrow overlap for clamping surface with small hardware. It's never going to be heavy-duty use like a fixed blade is. So the argument of we'd rather have heavy duty use rather than refinement is basically totally BS. It's a hollow, it's like a straw man argument. You're arguing against something that doesn't even matter because refinement and toughness are not exclusive of each other. You can have them both at the same time as witnessed across all of knife manufacturing in 2018 okay um yeah that that's the way it is guys i'm sorry um there should be at 200 dollars in an american-made product like this zero tolerance there should be a level of refinement to recompense you for the amount that you paid for the knife okay this knife is about $220. It's got a much more modern, high-performance steel. Uh, it's a titanium frame lock with a bearing pivot, and none of that really matters. But the refinement in every respect, every faceting of its manufacturing is much higher than this knife. This knife is still coasting along on what knives were in 1999 2000 guys and that is just the truth that is the truth of the matter um so fit and finish uh it, it's not horrible guys you hear horror stories of you know liners that are hanging off and or scales that are off the liners by two millimeters and crooked screws and i don't see any of that uh yes it is a nail catch all the way around between the liners and the scales on both sides. Uh, a, you know, a pretty serious nail catch, guys. It's not finished flush. And then when you go to the ends here, you can see the machining. This I think this is wire EDM cutting, guys. It didn't get cleaned off on the short ends, the butt end. Um, you know, it's it's not what you expect in a two hundred dollar knife in two thousand eighteen as far as fit and finish. Not bad, but not refined at all. Cause look at this fifty two dollar knife, guys. Look at the difference in the way this is done. The machining on this. Okay? A fifty two dollar knife. Um and, and this is not to say that this knife is better than this knife or either way. I'm not even talking about that. I'm saying what you are getting for your money has radically changed in 20 years. But Emerson Knives has not, guys. Um, let's go on to action. Uh, action for Emerson Knives is where I have my biggest issue with Emerson Knives. Uh, I'm sure you can hear, when I go to close this, lock stick, heavy lock stick for a fairly thin stock liner lock. Um, that is the titanium liner against that harder steel tang of the blade. And I'm going to tell you right now, Ernest Emerson and Emerson Knives, how you can make this knife much better and do it cheaper probably. This titanium liner, take that titanium liner out like this and throw it away. Throw away all the titanium. No more titanium liner. Come back with an equal thickness stainless steel liner. Weight relieve each side and you will have a lighter knife just as strong 
uh, structurally of a knife and you will have a easier to tune and more user friendly lock up guys it will do away with the lock stick it will do away with the excessive wear issues that titanium liner locks are known to have across the entire industry uh, you know what Benchmade did it in 99 2000 well they quit guys everybody quit doing titanium liner locks everybody okay I can't tell you right now unless it's just a cheap piece of crap who is still doing a plain titanium liner lock uh, no uh, no more well-known company that I know of is doing titanium liner locks in 2018 um, that is something you're never going to get past on this uh, the titanium is much softer than the steel titanium cannot ever be hardened as hard as steel if you think so go do some research it cannot uh, even beta titanium the max rockwell you're going to see on it's about 49 and then this steel is 58 to 61 uh, that's 10 points difference on the rockwell c scale that's a huge difference guys this titanium will wear faster than the steel and as it does, your lockup is going to get later and later and later and later until this lock bar is all the way across up against the liner on the show side. It will happen. Uh, even if, and I don't know if they are, even if uh, Emerson is carbonizing the face of their lock, even then you still have deformation issues with the titanium being softer uh, any impacts against the uh, pivot of this knife that can be absorbed into the lock face will deform that lock face um, there's just no way around that either guys it's it's a product of the titanium being soft um, that's why on modern frame locks that are titanium you always see a big hardened steel lock face insert in here it is for that wear resistance and impact resistance uh, to make that titanium work uh, in the liner lock you can't do that guys it is 20 year old technology that all other all other manufacturers have left behind but Emerson still continues to use and it's still defended the use of it is still I guarantee guarantee some our Emerson fanboy will come in here and tell me that oh you just gotta break it in that lock stick will go away and you know it'll it's never gonna wear out I've used my CQC7 for five years and I'm a Ranger Delta Ninja sniper and it's never worn out on me and I'm gonna call bullshit straight out of the bat I don't care there is absolutely nothing that can be done to overcome the hardness differences between that little bitty thin titanium liner and that much harder steel nothing nothing I, I've been at this a long time guys I've seen a lot of titanium liner locks wear out a lot of them including ones that I have owned and knives that I've repaired for other people or attempted to repair uh, my bench made lasted about two years before the liner was wore out on it and then I had to send it recently back to bench made where they recarbonized the lock face uh, to give it a little more length to make that lock up earlier and, and last a little longer um, and that's what I'm talking about here guys I'm not saying that anything is really bad on the Emerson folders uh, definitely not the designs I love Ernest Emerson's design language guys um, he is straight up designing a practical tactical utility knives period that's what his company does um, they have very seldom ever strayed outside of that um, that company spotlight their company focus let me say 
uh, that's what they do and they do it well for what it is but it's two hundred dollars guys and this is 2018 and I mean let's set this down because that's what Emerson is doing they are setting it on the table and they're just leaving it right there guys for anybody to come by and steal a piece of their pie um, Ernest Emerson pretty much started this crap the tactical I mean the very first real tactical folder that really busted huge on the market and started everything tactical everything tactical was pretty much done by Ernest Emerson he followed up with a company that brought out design after design just really well designed knives and you know they led the market and you know then they come in they've got this you know this family atmosphere and all this merchandise and and they dress up the knives with different clips and then you've got t-shirts and beanies and stickers and the emerson thing is it's like being in a club hey what you got there i got an emerson man what is it cqc7 yeah i got one of those too that's the thing that Emerson had, and they're leaving all of that on the table for somebody to take away. Why? Why are they doing that? There's nothing wrong with this design. There's nothing wrong with this blade design. There's nothing wrong with the handle, although I'd like to see a, you know more of a choil to keep you from sliding up on the blade. Um, I mean, there's nothing wrong with the design. It's just made like it was made in 1999, and the whole world is leaving them behind, guys. Leaving them behind. I, I honestly, um, outside of the people that just are part of that Emerson clique, I, I can't imagine that their uh, market percentage, it just doesn't shrink every year. I just can't imagine that it doesn't, guys. And I am so, if that is happening, I'm so sorry to see that because this company deserves to be at the top. Um, they've got the designs there. They've got the ability. Uh, the things that I would point out on this, um, we need to get rid of this titanium liner lock. Get rid of it. Bring in stainless steel. It will be stronger, it'll be easier to set up and tune, it'll be more satisfying, longer lasting, and cheaper. Steel is cheaper than titanium, it's cheaper to buy, it is cheaper to machine. You bring that in, you change your blade steel to a modern steel of the same uh, perceived level. At the top then, 154cm, Come in now and let's do S35VN. Not a radical change, uh, slightly greater performance, better corrosion resistance, um, you know, maybe a slightly higher price, but you're also going to a CPM type steel with a finer grain structure. Uh, it's just a better performing steel overall. Um, you know, the cost of those two things, they may just offset each other. Totally doing away with titanium and improving the blade steel may just totally offset each other price-wise. Um, the bushing system, I do not want to see Emerson ever go to a bearing pivot. That's not what these knives are all about. Um, they are a bushing pivot and need to stay that way. I'm totally with them on that. Totally. They use a, a thick um, stock nylatron um, bushing in it, which is a... Um, a high durometer nylon with that is Teflon impregnated. Um, it's a good feeling bushing, not quite uh, what phosphor bronze is, but you know it's it's tough and supportive like phosphor bronze. It's self lubricating and they're easy to replace. I've got no issues there. Don't worry about going to a, a bearing pivot. That's that's just totally different world. Um, hardware, I have no issue with the standard hardware. Um, I guarantee out in the field, it'll be easier to find something flat and something Phillips, although that's not really Phillips, uh, than it will be to find a micro set of Torx bits. I guarantee it. Uh, if, if you say that it's different, you've never worked out in the field. Uh, that's just the way it is. You go to any work site and you ask somebody for a Phillips head screwdriver and then you ask them for micro Torx bits and see which one you get first. 
Um, that's just the way it is, guys. Um, so I got no issue with that. I have no issue with the thumb disc opener. Uh, you can see that in the way that I open. Very easy to use. Uh, you just sort of shoot it out like a marble, guys. Um, I, I've got no issue with that. No changes there. Uh, the fit and finish. You know what? Uh, if they want to use the rough and tumble sort of fit and finish, then stay with that. Uh, I don't even need that. Just the improvement of the lock with the stainless liner instead of titanium and an upgrade, um, a slight modernized upgrade in the stainless steel. And, uh, you know, that would be really, that's core issues with this knife. Um, you want to refine this fit and finish beyond that to compete with modern knives, then go for that too. Even if it raised the cost of an Emerson from uh, $200 to $230, okay? Even if it did that, it would be well worth it and they would sell just as well. Uh, an Emerson at that point, guys, would sell just as well as, uh, say, you know, a Chinese-made, a high-end Chinese-made import, uh, you know, titanium frame lock, S35, bearing pivot, uh, hardened insert, milled pocket clips, all of that stuff. You know, for $200 right there, the smoothest knife I've ever owned, um, you know, this being American made, you did it for 200 to 230 with improved steel, improved lockup, and phosphor bronze uh, bushings. I think it would fly. No issues there. Leave the rest of it exactly the way it is. Come on, guys. It is 2018. It is not. It is not. Let me repeat that. 1999 anymore. It is 2018. And these designs the man behind them, the company behind it, deserve, um, and the knife enthusiast community deserves a better version of these knives from the company that makes them. Um, I, I, I honestly I can't say it any better than that, guys. And that's that is my uh, sort of review, constructive criticism of this Emerson A100. Um, yeah, it, again utmost respect to Ernest Emerson, all the people at Emerson Knives, no issues with the man, the company, the designs, nothing, but guys, you have got, you have got to come forward in 2018 and start changing this stuff to make a better, more modern product for your um, enthusiastic, cult-like uh, buying public. They really deserve it. Um, as always, thank you for taking the time to watch one of my videos. God bless all of you. Thank you to my cousin Tim for loaning me this knife to review. Thank you. And uh, we'll talk to you again.